Well, I really want to see the current exhibition. I, I mean, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh, oh it's me talking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we definitely need to get some shots. Yeah. Welcome to the World City Festival. I'm delighted to be uh, here at Duddles in Hong Kong today where we will be talking about the value of art and how it enhances Hong Kong and our global cities. My name is Rosanna Harris. I'm on the working group of Art Power Hong Kong, a community-driven organization to unite the arts in Hong Kong through the challenges of 2020 and also the director, head of Sinclair Arts. I'm delighted to welcome your speakers for today, Dr. Maria Mock, the Museum Director of the Hong Kong Museum of Art. Um, Alan Lowe, who is a prolific board member in Hong Kong, sitting on a lot of councils for um, the design and cultural sector in Hong Kong, including Parasite, one of Hong Kong's leading contemporary art centers, the Design Trust, as well as Art Basel in Hong Kong's um, Patrons Council and the Tate Asia Pacific Acquisition Council. And Dr. Henrietta Tsui Long, founder of Gallery Aura Aura and co founder of the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association, as well as one of Hong Kong's leading female entrepreneurs. Thank you for joining us all today. The first question I want to ask you all, when we're talking about how the arts enhances a city is, why is the arts important? And specifically, why is the arts important in 2020 when globally we're facing so many issues uh, related to the COVID-19 pandemic? So Henrietta, should we start with you? Why do you think the arts are important? Sure. Um, personally, I love listening to stories. I tell stories and I listen to stories and I read stories. I think art is really important because artists are the, one of the best storytellers in the world. So in this particular moment, um, in still deep in the pandemic, I think art is of utmost importance because it will help all of us in our own ways to, to, to um, I guess, to understand each other's stories and to be relatable to each other. Thank you. And Alan, what about you? Well, art is is such an important part of the city. Culturally, it's you know it's 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 kind of that wider, bigger conversation across so many different disciplines and and sort of how, in a way, how people relate to each other. I suppose it also brings about the you know through art conversation also it's it also kind of brings about kind of the sanity of or insanity <laughs> of the situation. It's it's sort of like an expression of of the state of being. So I think it's uh, in particular during you know difficult times, you know, especially in our city over the last what sixteen months, you know, political followed by by uh, the pandemic. I mean, it's 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 ever so important. And I think art helps people process um, their life experiences, especially the most dramatic ones. Mm -hmm. Um, the pain and the joy and maybe the relief. So it's particularly important at this time of the pandemic, um, not just for the creator, like uh, the artists themselves, through you know, art making, then they're able to relate to, their, to the challenges that they're facing, but they're also sharing uh, the strength and the courage with other people, with the viewers who, who could sort of borrow that strength and creativity and imagination to, to do so, some sort of self-healing. We always um, talk about how therapeutic mm. is art at this time. Okay, so in terms of art being a, a mirror for society and an outlet for expression, and, and obviously that being increasingly important in times of stress, where do we see the arts in Hong Kong? I think art has a lot of... Um, manifestations in the way it presents itself in Hong Kong. And I want to see a little bit about your views in terms of how that ecosystem has developed in Hong Kong. Um, so again, I want to start with Henrietta, going back to you in terms of 
how has the gallery sector um, kind of guided the development of the arts ecosystem in Hong Kong? I think um, for the gallery side, um, it has been, we have a very short history. The, the, the total history, number of years that a, a, a contemporary galleries actually existed in Hong Kong would have been maybe fewer than 30, 40 years. And uh, of which on the, top, on the first 20 years, there were maybe two handful of galleries, that's it. For the time that I have been uh, in this sector, that has been about 15, 16 years, um, I, I think it's the best time um, that Hong Kong people have experienced. Um, given that my aspiration was to be an artist and I failed to become one, I strive to work towards having something, a career that is closer to, uh, closest to artists. And, and galleries um, are take a very important role in the primary uh, development of the careers of artists. So being a local Hong Kong gallerist, we feel that this mission to promote and to bring up Hong Kong artists is key. Hong Kong has all of the infrastructure that is needed. Um, of course, there can always be more, but it, compared to when I grew up, when there was nothing, and it was basically impossible. So I encourage artists and young young people to be brave and courageous, given the pandemic has really um, bring forth a lot of different thoughts to us, to be braver and, and just to um, do whatever they want with, um, in creation. Well, you, you've mentioned the, the exponential growth, really, in the commercial sector in Hong Kong. Um, how about from the institutional side? How do you feel that museums have um, developed that framework within Hong Kong? I think the museum has changed a lot. Um, we are the earliest uh, public uh, art museum in Hong Kong, established since 1962. But I think even the, I see huge growth since the past decade. And of course, we are the custodian of the, the uh, collection and we are the nurturer of, of uh, artistic uh, talent. But like Harrietta says, um, only the sky is the limit. I, when I was a student, I used to see only exhibitions within an enclosed uh, space, uh, the museum gallery, even behind glass uh, vitrines or, or, or display cases. Mm -hmm. But now, it's just um, so, uh, there is so much expansion. We are often using different spaces in and out of the museum. We are engaged in a very different partnership, working with the private sectors, uh, NGOs, art groups, um, to try to create also a museum without walls, I would say. Very interesting that you you mentioned that museum without walls. I think you know now it's more important than ever with the digital transformation uh, that's happening and taken on an additional speed this year as everything goes virtual. You also mentioned working with NGOs and uh, the public sector and the private sector together. So, Alan, what do you think uh, is you know the importance of that dynamic? You 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 sit on a lot of boards and advisory committees. Um, how do you feel that that plays a role in, in also driving the arts ecosystem in the city? Well, I mean, that's the, that's the only way for, for the Hong Kong scene to grow. And obviously with, um, you know, you have, you have the fair and the gallery uh, space um, that's obviously has seen a lot of growth in the last 10 years. Um, no, in terms of in terms of the nonprofit side of things, obviously yes, we have. I mean, I I'm, I'm, I sit on the board of Parasite, and in you know together with uh, uh, with AAA, the museum, and obviously M Plus uh, opening next year. I mean, obviously that's going to see some growth, but but we continue to want to see more uh, more efforts uh, um, from from patrons from collectors. Um, I think I'd like to be able to see a few more private museums, foundations. Um, I mean, it's it's still early days. I mean, it's it's been it's been it's been I guess you know ten plus years since we've had this sort of like revival in Hong Kong. So I think it's 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 early days. I mean, I think the next ten fifteen years will be super interesting for Hong Kong. And what do you think is the key trigger? You you sort of say ten ten years ago is that there's been a, a changing point. What would you pin that to? I guess it. You know, strangely, it, it was it's it started with the commercial art fair. I think it was it was Art Hong Kong back in 
twenty o two o seven, I think that start that started the whole thing, and then that that eventually morphed into Art Basel, mm -hmm. and then with uh, with in uh, twenty eleven twenty twelve that first wave of international dealers galleries coming into town, and also I I think uh, um, Hong Kong's representation in Venice Biennial back in twenty thirteen I think today you think about Hong Kong artists today versus 10 years ago. I mean, it's a, it's a completely world of difference. Yeah. I mean, we're getting so much more attention today. Yeah. yeah. You work with a lot of uh, Hong Kong contemporary artists as well, don't you, at the museum. Uh, what are you doing to, to engage future audiences for your museum? We're using um, a lot of the, actually, especially during the last uh, several months, uh, social media platform. Yeah trying to engage them um, to not only come and look at the artwork, but also talk about it and have their own expressions. And I might be able to call it a visual engagement because people are just using the iPhone to capture whatever they see, and then they turn it into their own little stories. And I think that's when it makes it interesting, when people try to, I mean, begin to, to, to personalize the experience. So it's not just an artwork that's just sitting there and, I mean, in the olden times, we'll just read the caption, uh, whether they understand it or not. It's, you know, it's a new that, level of consumption. A, it is. It Cultural is. consumption. Yes, exactly. Far more discussion around and it. Far I mean, more with discussion social media, around you can't it. Yeah. hide from it, really. We now spend a lot of time doing our IG post, yeah. and I'm engaging a lot of young colleagues. The other day, somebody asked me, oh, so who is your IG team? I said, everybody is on yeah, my IG team. <laughs> <laughs> about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah and and, uh, and also we're engaging a lot of commissioning on site because mm -hmm. now we have a new museum uh, we've been closed for three years well four years but working on it on for three years and we reopened last November and after we reopen we have a lot more interesting space uh, within the museum and in the surrounding area mm -hmm. people absolutely love those artworks and you know they just come post it on the Instagram, talk about it and say, wow, it's wonderful. I mean, the museum stands out because of these artworks, mm. these uh, commissioned. Yeah. yeah. So that dynamic between Hong Kong's cultural history and ongoing interpretations of that is something that's very important from definitely, your curatorial Definitely. We want to bring out a Hong Kong viewpoint mm -hmm. to interpret this uh, legacy. Uh, in the museum collection, we have four core collections, four core pillars. Um, that are, we have a lot of traditional artwork. Actually, we have Chinese painting and calligraphy. We have Chinese antiquities. We have China trade. Uh, that's 18th, 19th century South China art. But of course, we also have modern Hong Kong art. And so we're very Hong Kong um, if you look at what we collect. But at the same time, we have to kind of maintain that, that Hong Kongness by providing a, a a twist, a Hong Kong twist to that, to that well of contrast. And I think it's uh, not just through uh, commissioning local artists, but also through how we curate and how we, our tone of voice, how we talk about these art stories that involve not just Hong Kong artists, but also Hong Kong collectors mm -hmm. and Hong Kong curators. So we talked about a lot, of, a lot about Hong Kong artists and Hong Kong audiences. But obviously, from the perspective of the artists, from the galleries, from the art fairs, and, and, and from the international standing of the museums, we want to also talk to um, visitors, maybe not right now, <laughs> unfortunately, but you know, in the future, visitors to Hong Kong are making um, people, you know, destinations out of our museums and our galleries, and we've got you know, the much-awaited Contemporary Art Museum M+, Plus opening in 2021. What are your thoughts, Alan, on, on how we continue to drive Hong Kong as a destination and, and, and enhance the city's appeal as a, um, a place I guess, for the arts. I guess more and more when you look at Hong Kong, you, you also have to look at kind of the, the entire region. So, yeah. you know, we are obviously we are, you know, part of the Greater Bay Area. So that kind of takes you from a 7 million audience base to like 80 to 100 millions within, yeah. within this two, two hour travel circle. So that opens up a lot more possibilities. Um, uh, obviously, Hong Kong has has developed itself to be um, to become the hub, the international hub, 
you know, in in all of Asia, I tend to think that Hong Kong is uh, this. This seems to be the right thing happening here um, uh, in terms of in terms of really, really kind of uh, 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 kind of sets the scene for the for, for for a dialogue with with the rest of the global community. I think. Um, in terms of uh, what Hong Kong has to offer in, in terms of culture, um, it's, it's manifold. Um, first of all, yes, um, we, we actually welcome international um, um, influences and um, value the freedom of expression. But if you look at me as a person that whom has vast growth in the past decade due to this, um, then you can see that um, the importance of Hong Kong and people working here is to understand that we have the we have our own um, culture to propagate. We have um, we are one of the top um, cities in the world to have been modernizing ink um, uh, since the 1950s, and because of that, um, we have a lot of material which is already here archived um, in the museums and in other different libraries. With that, we grow and we are able to absorb what is uh, great and specialized in the world, and then we make it, in, mm -hmm. turn it into our own. Yeah, and, and Hong Kong's makeup is very international um, and cosmopolitan. And I know that you sit on some boards that, that look at how tourism is, is promoted into to Hong Kong. How do you think the arts fits into that conversation? Hong Kong certainly has benefited so much from um, sort of that inbound interest um, from the rest of the world. Thanks to Art Basel and um, and sort of all the all the sort of sort of collateral events that happen around it. Putting something on 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 the global um, cultural calendar is uh, is is for sure a, a a really big deal for for the city and for the region. Years ago we had to fly all over the world. Um, to meet these experts. And now, like, if you miss an event internationally, don't worry. Mm -hmm. They would likely come to Hong Kong um, when this, um, all these major art week happen. And of course, uh, we love to see this happen uh, continuously. But that comes down to how efficient Hong Kong continue to be, infrastructure-wise, and how welcoming we are in terms of our tax um, structure. Uh, there must be policies that have to make, be improved and made to encourage um, international artists to come on board and, and so that we can be really comparable vis-a-vis -vis New York or Tokyo, right? Um, um, or even Beijing. So um, we, it's, it's, uh, it's something that is a, a competitive advantage to us, but we, we need, really need to work hard to keep it. So I, I do want to talk about public art and, and what role public arts has in enhancing a city's value um, and taking art outside of museum walls onto the streets? As a Hong Kong citizen, we definitely want to see much more uh, public art uh, uh, to be shown. In Hong Kong, we have to understand Hong Kong is a very, very expensive city. And each uh, uh, square centimeter <laughs> <laughs> of land, it's, it's, it's very, very sought after. I think interdisciplinary uh, art and new media art would be something that Hong Kong can look into and do more. We have so many glass buildings. Mm -hmm. If we can light up all the glass buildings, not just one or two, but all of these buildings across and forget about those shiny bubbles and, and uh, light bulbs over Christmas. <laughs> and, and there are a lot of light bulbs <laughs> over Christmas. From the 80s. Yeah, from the 80s. <laughs> just invite more artists from the region, uh, from Hong Kong, um, to, uh, but then to support them with the technology and the equipment they need and just shooting up all the glass, light up all the glass windows and, and make something be creative about it. Well, that's something to be excited about for M+, because I think the whole facade is going to be used as a digital art installation, which I, for one, can't wait for. Very excited for that. <laughs> In a dream world, one thing that you think would be weird regardless of budget, that would change and really um, be a, a positive influence on promoting the visitation of, um, of arts and culture in Hong Kong and participation in the arts in Hong Kong? Question for all of you. Um, Maria, do you want to start? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, I think if, um, if people could start to 
not see art as something that's from the elite circle. Mm -hmm. And to be able to connect art with their everyday life, that would really be a huge change. And <clears throat> I think it would also contribute to the su sustainability that we are all fighting for. I mean, from the <clears throat> institution point of view, this is something that we can work harder on. Um, uh, we were talking about how we want to promote the museum and promote our collection through <clears throat> social media, but that's just the first step. Um, what needs to be done after that is really to deepen that understanding of art. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just stays on the level of selfie and Instagrammable mm -hmm. images, and that's not enough. That won't turn an art lover into someone who, is collect who begins to collect. What about you, Alan? What would be your, your dream? Well, you think about you don't think about Hong Kong, even though it's a relatively, you know, relatively small city in terms of the footprint. I think there's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of culture is very concentrated on Hong Kong Island and and Kow and Kowloon. And but we we think about the whole population, you know, almost eight million people. The vast majority actually live in the new territories. Mm -hmm. So how do you bring? It's like how do you instead of doing something you know mm -hmm. so far away from from the mass, you know why don't you, what what about bring? It's like what about bringing West Kowloon to them? You know mm -hmm. so so you know we've always had this idea that you know what if what if what if someone actually uh, managed to create an art farm uh -huh. in the new territories, <laughs> you know create you know create your studio spaces for residencies <coughs> and, and to be able to do very kind of more ambitious, you know, whether it's indoor, whether it's outdoor, you know, projects, uh, special commissions. And obviously, you know, being, you know, someone from the food world, we think about, oh, you know, how about a, an organic market on the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> Where? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we find land. Yeah, that's the, the, the endless question, in yeah. Hong Kong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what about you, Henrietta? A dream is to see the major collaborations amongst all these different uh, elements of the ecosystem happening. Um, for example, when the museum is about to plan a show for, uh, in the two or three years later, that uh, galleries uh, can be advised so that um, they can develop their program echoing or criticizing or critiquing or supplementing what is about to show in the museum, um, and which is collectible. Uh, maybe a loosely organized organization that has um, functional responsibilities that, that link each other, um, and so that Hong Kong has a real strategy, whether it is uh, political, uh, not political, public art, or, or, or gallery development, or collector um, wanting a new and more vibrant art, um, that could, or possibly be a lot more jamming happening, and and not to be afraid of um, of the being, uh, I guess, um, stigmatized into certain things. That would be my dream. Okay, so we've talked a lot about Hong Kong and arts here. Um, we're obviously having this discussion within the context of the World City Festival and what um, the the role of art in cities for the future around the world. What do you think, um, from a sort of top level policy level, is the the value and the role of art within an ideal city? Uh, and how do you connect the arts to people's daily lives and daily existence effectively? Hmm. Maria, I'm going to pass oh, that wow. one to you first. <laughs> Such a deep one. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think it's going to be important for um, art to become something that's both physically accessible, but also uh, mentally mentally accommodating for people to be able to sort of resort to art when they, um, when they feel that they need inspiration, when they feel that they need support. So it's just not looking about art, but also thinking in terms of it. But then the city would have to be very much welcoming in a sense, uh, not just artists would feel that they have the freedom to, to create. Curators would have the resources to interpret art and 
create art programs, and we talk about art spaces. Um, those art spaces would be readily uh, available, and and we would sort of be immersed. The experience will be immersive, and we don't even will be having this discussion about how to make it more accessible. Get beyond that. Well, digitalization has certainly done a lot to democratize the arts already. Um, but diversity and inclusion remains a very big topic. Um, Alan, how do you think we look at arts I guess for I'm, future cities? I guess I'm also thinking about the physical, like the value of physical spaces in the future. Um, you know, before 2020, we used to travel around the world to see exhibitions, to, to go to auction, to do a lot of art collection visits, you know, to do all that. And in light of this situation with the new normal, with, you know, with smart cities, with, with the, that progression, what is that next 10, 20 years going to look like? Uh, what is what is the new what is the new value of a physical museum? What is the new value of a gallery, or how how uh, or a nonprofit, uh, uh, and how, how and how this new dynamic uh, works with the rest of the city and also with with the network of major cities around the world? So I think that there's there, there, it's not so much here's the answer but it's like it's like here's an even it's, here's, a, here's an even bigger question yeah. for you <laughs> if only we could come up with the answer i guess that's moving into henrietta's virtual 10 story museum for Incart. <laughs> definitely definitely that's a dream right isn't it yeah. mm, i think ideal city um would allow people from all sorts of life um to express themselves through serious art, like using art as an expression. And as Maria discussed, like maybe we can touch and feel art anywhere we go. Like they are, uh, artists should be readily available around us at, uh, I mean, in terms of all kinds of our performing art, visual art, music, etc., at uh, very affordable prices. In terms of um, ideal, ideal, I still, personally think that art is um, something that we want to sense and touch and immerse in. So I, I do see a high value in, in having space, physical space. Um, so it is an investment of a city, of a world city, to provide space, whether it's a farmland, inside, build an island in the ocean, or open up the museum grounds for all. Um, that, that is already quite idealistic. And what do you think the role of VR and AI and all the other acronyms that go within that conversation, um, what is that, what's the role of, of those you know, virtual realities in that conversation? Oh, they definitely should not replace the real thing. That's for sure. Because I, I echo Harriet's viewpoint. I mean, you really have to show the artwork and let people enjoy it uh, rather than just you know, clicking something and think that they have seen it all. Um, that's, I think, it's the real challenge for us people who provide art programs. Because, yes, you have to deal with the inconvenience of lockdowns and, and people's restricted social distancing and all that. But if they don't see the beauty of the actual display, then... I think we've lost the battle. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. And we, I think all of us will agree, have come away with a lot to think about.